Hey, what's going on YouTube? Thanks for uh, tuning in today. We have our eight-week vlog check-in with uh, John Rivas, super heavyweight, going for pro card uh, at the Arnold Classic this year, 2023. So thanks for joining us, John. Yeah, glad to be back. Doing the doing a little check-in. So good deal. So as we said out there, you know, be sure to uh, subscribe, like. Turning notifications definitely for this one because every time we post it, we don't want you to miss mm -hmm. an update. You can kind of walk through John's journey with us, and as always, you know, put comments in a comment section. Um, mm -hmm. John or I will, uh, our team will notify us. We'll be happy to answer uh, any questions you have. So we'll kind of give an overview. You know, just like last time, we have some different poses we'll go through today: diets, next steps. John put together like a three-day difference just to kind of mm -hmm. show viewers like how much as you start to you know, lean out, like how much water fluctuates and things like that. Some people mm -hmm. more than others. Uh, I know John, that's something that you've kind of experienced a pretty big difference just in a couple of days, right? Yeah. Yeah. We'll definitely, we'll get into that um, as soon as we bring out the photos, but yeah, I'm sort of, I used to joke with Justin about it, man. I was like, man, I'm like a water Buffalo. You know, if certain things aren't, you know, sleep is, is rough or other things are rough, then uh, yeah, I end up holding a lot of subcutaneous water. Got it. Yeah, we'll we'll jump in. Yeah, I know Justin just kind of got back, so hoping to have him on next week for like a live check in. But he did send over his notes, so we appreciate that. Uh, Want to kind of talk through what you have going on here? Just kind of an overview. We're at eight weeks out. Yeah, so I'm down about two pounds, um, a pound and a half, two pounds. So nothing crazy. Uh, you know, just uh, I will say though. This week was was definitely more difficult than last week um, in a positive way, though, because I think like the preps I've done before when I'm three weeks out, when I'm four weeks out, you don't go fully hypo to where you pass out, but you start feeling it. You know, you, you start sweating profusely. Your blood sugar just goes, woof, you know, and um you start feeling like you're about to pass out, but you don't really pass out, right? Because um, your pancreas is still working. It's just a little off because you're not not getting enough of those carbs in. But I usually feel that about three to four weeks out, but I started feeling at this time like eight and a half weeks out. Um, actually, two days, the last two days, I've felt it after breakfast. So probably like maybe 10 a.m., I was, uh, after my first meal at like eight, I started feeling, um, a little hypo and I wasn't even doing anything crazy. Just, you know, uh, one day I was doing posing and the other day, um, I was like up taking a shower or something and, uh, I started feeling it. So it's a good thing. I mean, it's not obviously not the best, right. Um, if you're just sort of a normal person, but for me, that's a good sign that we are burning through everything we're putting in our body. So yeah, no, that's interesting. Yeah, it sounds like training and energy were pretty good uh, this last yeah, week. Yeah, like I said before, probably the first three weeks of the diet, um, we started about 16 weeks out. It was rough, but um, hit a great, great uh, quad session and, and hamstring session this week. So both leg days were good. Um, I'm trying to remember. The prep brain's hitting me. I'm forgetting stuff. But um, back day was pretty good. I think chest day was a little, I felt a little bit weak. I felt it on my push sort of chest day. And other than that, it was, it's pretty decent. Good deal. Good deal. Yeah. I'm starting to feel the diet. So we'll, uh, mm -hmm. I'm sure I'll have some more of that each, each week, but, uh, so what, what are we looking at here? So we got, is this, so the... this was Friday and I felt terrible. Like everyone's been getting the flu and stuff like that. Um, the flu or some type of cold, uh, especially on the East coast. So, I looked at these photos and I was like, man, what the hell happened? I'm carrying a ton of water. I'm flat. Like, I don't know what's going on. Um, so yeah, this was Friday morning and I was a little upset about it. Um, but I ended up sweating that day during my workout a lot. And the next day, so that day I had hamstrings Saturday, I had arms. Um, and we'll show the three day difference. So you can see, you know, the abs are washed out. There's legs, there's no definition, there's no cuts. Um, so we'll see Sunday, uh, the three day difference from Friday to Sunday. Got it. And then I noticed like your most muscular, just kind of a little bit about, I mean, of course, like, you know, check and picture like half awake. It's like, just do it. So I'm just curious. So is that your normal mm -hmm. hand position there? Is that the position you like? Just uh, about, just yeah. about. Yeah. What, you'll what do you see like about there. that, that positioning? 
Uh, I mean, I just try to do it because uh, my my arms aren't super short. Like some guys have like really short arms. Mm. Um, so my arms are a little bit longer. So that's just the way sort of flaring my uh, my shoulders and my elbows out and stuff. Yeah, I've seen guys kind of do like the hands together. I mean, it was upside down. Yeah, you gotta have you gotta have shorter forms and stuff oh, to do okay. that. So mine that aren't that short. Yeah, mine look a little weird doing that. Yeah, I think definitely like being a taller guy. Obviously, you know, it was only at the uh, like the state level and stuff, but still, I mm -hmm. could tell in like photos like a little bit of a difference. Um, mm -hmm. Or the people out there that are looking to compete, it's worth the investment mm -hmm. to a posing coach because of those little tweaks. A lot of it is mm -hmm. it's an art. You know, it is an art, and mm -hmm. I think people think. Uh, outsider people don't really realize that uh mm -hmm. and so that's that's pretty cool and with the ab and thigh um i noticed like some coaches and this might have been the body type they kind of did like the always like the flare the lats out and back and then mm -hmm. yours are kind of in like this is there a reasoning mm -hmm. behind that do you do it a certain different based on body type or that just happens to be how you took the picture just the way i like it yeah, yeah. i mean i wasn't focusing too much that day on on posing um because they were update photos but that's just the way sort of that looks best with me yeah i believe um i mean i open up a little more on stage but gotcha mm -hmm. yeah one thing i learned that i didn't do in my early 20s when i competed or didn't realize was like i'm trying to think of how to word this but it was almost like a lean back i forgot who it was i was watching a couple different coaches on youtube and they're talking about mm -hmm. like from that angle like when you're hitting it wherever the hands are just kind of like a a little bit of a back lean yeah to push so, the abs out more yeah it actually, not not for you i'm saying for me but well it flares a lot more so okay. right there you know, I could scrunch down a few more inches and the, the abs look deeper. But when I come up and that one, I'm sort of half-assed to be fair. But, yeah. you know, if you, you tighten down and you come up just a little bit, not to the point that you release activation of the core, but the fact that you can start flaring your lats a little more, that's what it is. Gotcha. Good deal. Good deal. Are right, some back shots? Yeah. So you can really see it here. Um Glutes are starting to tighten up a little bit, but I'm holding a ton of water, um, like a ton. And it, something just felt off that day. I just felt exhausted. I felt tired. Um, like I said, everyone's getting sick. Uh, so I upped my antioxidants and multivitamins and minerals and uh, seems to be making me feel a whole lot better. I did up my fluids as well. Um, pretty much I was drinking enough, but I upped it to where I'm sort of sipping water like all day long and uh that seemed to help make me feel a little bit better to be honest is that now is that something you measure or are you you've been doing it so long you kind of have a pretty good gauge of it i so i use the same cup it's gotcha. actually this one right here um and it's actually pretty big yeah but um i think that's like a a mo's mo's burrito cup from like 10 years ago but um so i that one gets like almost 30 ounces of water Okay. So every time I drink a full cup, I know I had 30 ounces. So I keep doing that throughout the day. I usually end up with about right under two gallons, I think. Oh, wow. Um, okay. So you're getting up yeah. there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I heard, and this might've been athlete specific. I heard Hani one time on a podcast, um, especially when I was doing it, I just try to learn the coach's point of view. And it was really interesting. Like he was talking about not restricting to they're dehydrated, but really monitoring water intake because of like mm -hmm. bloat and gut distension. But I think that was mm -hmm. more the athlete he was talking about maybe, but mm -hmm. ha, uh, have you noticed any variances between like two gallons or like a half gallon or one gallon? Is there anything no. like as far as gut and all that? just kind of. No. Um, I notice more with, you know, cause I stay on my probiotics, my prebiotics, um, you know, obviously prebiotics are the, you know, pretty much what's going to feed the good bacteria, you know, probiotics, right. take those if you're on antibiotics or whatever um, to replenish them. But gut health has been like pretty good this year, uh, to be honest. So I'm not super, I don't see a ton of bloat changes, especially during prep in the off season. Um, I would say if I eat a lot of oily foods or fat foods um or fried foods I, I know this i'll definitely get bloated um but during prep obviously you know we limit that stuff in the off season but during prep that's like a no-go 100 percent um yeah. so really don't notice a lot of issues in prep they sort of resolve themselves because you're so 
super strict with everything, you know, because in the off season, you're strict, you're still eating all your meals and stuff. But, you know, if you go out, you know, you're a year out from a show or something, because, you know, I've had a year and a half, more, almost more than that between shows, a year and three quarters, pretty much. I mean, there were times where, you know, you go out with your significant other or whatnot, and you get something to eat, you know, or you get some pizza, or you get a burger or something like that. And, um, you know, if anyone sits there and says, you know, oh, I don't eat burgers my whole life, I'm like, oh, come on, man. You know, so, but you all have a little bit of dissension and stuff after that, um, maybe due to lactose or gluten. But yeah, no, whenever I, whenever I eat something, I've been, I've been taking canopy kind of sparingly. I mean, I'm not doing mm-hmm. a ton of high days right now, um, mm-hmm. but just on like a high day or if like there's a meal that's a little out of ordinary because mm-hmm. my food is so basic every day, mm-hmm. regardless of what time of year, it's just the volume changes. So, mm-hmm. um, so yeah, that's kind of helps, but good stuff. Well, here's your three day one. I know this was a, something you want to kind of play with and and you can walk us through what what we're seeing here yeah so uh the left all the way on the left is friday the middle is saturday and the right is sunday Mm -hmm. um so the left i was holding a ton of water and i just felt off i might have been coming down with or fighting something off per se yeah um sleep was bad too saturday i was extremely flat flat as can be i mean flatter than i'm normally flat and then sunday um, which is crazy because I didn't take in that many carbs. All those days were sort of medium days for me. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. Okay. Carb one. Yeah, there's no yeah. high days here. There's no high carb days or cheat meals or anything. Um, and then by Sunday, I just felt I felt myself again. You know, granted, I'd taken my antioxidants again and a little more prebiotics and stuff and, you know, drink a little more water. And you can see just from the water intake um, and flushing everything out and just getting back to myself, like there was no high meals in between these days. There's no cheat meals. Um, This was just continually sticking to the diet and just my body sort of kicking back into gear and feeling better. Um, This week was huge in fat loss. Um, This week, I would say, uh, I would say that this has been the biggest week so far. And from here on out, it's just sort of going to snowball. Yeah. So. Yeah, no, good deal. Yeah, it's interesting just those three days. I mean, a, a little bit different lighting yeah in the last yeah. you can see you can see kind of yeah. what you're talking about there so. yeah because the one on the right it wasn't even an update photo it was like so i wasn't i wasn't going to sit there and get everything set up it was more just like hey let me just take this photo and see how i look today i feel better yeah. and see how i look and uh, i took a photo and i was like okay like i'm definitely you know more content with that the way i'm looking and uh, sometimes when you feel and when you're in tune with yourself and your body you can tell without even taking a photo like All right, right. i know things are better oh i know yeah it's it's like the worst too when you're like i think i feel or look good and i snap a few pics i'm like mm-hmm. i'm not set i'm not setting these in i'm like oh man mm-hmm. but uh yeah i mean if there's a show in the line then i'll send them in because i'm mm-hmm. like well i'd rather have too aggressive a diet than not aggressive enough but mm-hmm. yeah I, I had some experience recently with that yeah Speaking- the only the only crazy thing is though i will say about this is you know when you're a super heavyweight in the npc or as a pro in the open you know, and you're a bigger guy, you know, I'm, I'm almost 5'11", right? So we're getting close to that six feet mark. When you're a bigger dude, you have to balance being full while being lean. Yeah. You know, so you can't just be – if you're a little bit on the, the lesser muscular side, you can almost get away with being too flat. Um, you can almost just sort of dry out and be super flat. And it won't make a huge difference, but when you have the muscularity that gives you sort of, you know, a round shoulder muscle belly look like, you know, you can see in the quads, the quads go flat and then the quads get round. You have to be able to balance the water depletion and things like that. So that makes it a little bit more difficult going into a show, but. I think that's where coaching comes in too, to know the body type, (laughs) you know, like even for me, like I, I only worked specifically with Justin for eight weeks. Um, and you know, what he was mentioning is if we could work together longer, mm-hmm. he can kind of get a better grasp on what to do. And maybe we can even overshoot conditioning so we can come in fuller mm-hmm. for the show being a taller guy. So it's kind of, it is kind of interesting, you know, like mm-hmm. you said for different body types and how they can adjust a little bit, not yeah. only posing, but how they come in. Yeah. Well, let's jump into the diet. So we still got a one high day a week, five medium, one low, zero cheats. Um, what were the changes this week that, uh, 
So received? we on the low day, we dropped um, the first three meals, about 10 carbs. And then the last three meals, I'm just doing veggies um, for my carb. Uh, protein stayed the same pretty much throughout every every. Uh, I think we upped fats just a tiny bit on low day. Um, and then on medium day, the last two meals, we went from, I think, 35 carbs, which was, oh, man, what was that equivalent of, I can say? Uh, so, like, maybe cooked rice, maybe like 120 grams of cooked rice. Mm -hmm. um, so, we're, we yeah. went from that down to just veggies for the last two meals on my regular workout days. So, like, five days a week, my last two meals out of the six meals are just veggies. Um, oh, so when it says 10 there, those are 10 grams, but from veggies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because, I mean, veggies do give you carbs, but you can eat a lot more. Right. Like, as a, compared to rice, like, yeah. that amount of rice cooked would be, like, it would be so minuscule. Like I remember a, doing like a spoonful. that. I know. Yeah. I remember doing that and being looking down, like, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. So you just put more veggies in there. Um, I like broccoli and. What's your, uh, yeah, as I say, what's your vegetable of choice? Broccoli. Uh, spinach, broccoli little bit of carrots mixed in um those are, are more my my go-to yeah my brother-in-law used to make these like just you know massive salads that have like next to nothing in it <laughs> like mm -hmm. really truly it was just like water and like leaves yeah, you know cellulose yeah like yeah. sometimes i'll do that too um so I'll, I'll cook my chicken uh just plain and then i'll, I'll get like a uh almost they call it like an American salad. So uh, just like a normal, um, oh my gosh, what's the word for it? Uh, not like spinach salad, but just, you know. Yeah. Um, anyway, so like I'll get my salad and then I'll maybe throw a couple little grape tomatoes in there, put my chicken in there, pour some buffalo sauce or whatever it is um, with no fat and whatnot, and then just eat it. Yeah. So it tastes different. It gives, at this point in your diet, you know, when you do it enough, you, you're, you know how it feels. So you don't really, I mean, there'll be like moments throughout the day where you're like, man, I'm hungry, but you're not craving anything. You're yeah. just like, ah, this is a diet. I'm hungry. But then when you eat something of different texture, yeah. for instance, like the crispy crispness of a salad, it, it takes away, or, you know, for me, it's um, like I'm doing right now. It's uh, crystal light, um, a little bit of crystal light in, in water and, uh, just that little bit of taste makes all the difference. And like, you don't really crave anything anymore. Yeah, no, it's good stuff. And then you're, it looks like, uh, so still using field rations on the medium days and then doubling up on the uh, leg day or. Yeah. So for the intra workout, I'm using field rations, um, just one scoop a day. And, uh, it's been working really well. Normally when I get down in my diet, you know, because people may see this and be like, oh, 240 grams of carbs. Like, that's a lot. Oh, I burn through that like really fast. But sometimes if I don't have enough carbohydrates in my body, if I take an amino or intra workout, my body views it as like, oh, carbs. And so it sort of sends a bunch of acid to digest it all. Uh, um, but in reality, it gives me an acid reflux, like almost within like 15 minutes of drinking it. Um that used to happen a lot. It's been better because I've been supplementing with, uh, I do apple cider vinegar to sort of balance my pH level in my stomach. Um, so that's allowed me to continue taking my intra workout, uh, field rations. And, uh, I was yeah. going to say, I used to get that when I, on my low days, I had all vegetables mm -hmm. for a while there. And, uh, I used to get that really bad. Like I said, mm -hmm. when it was just vegetables and protein, mm -hmm. right. It was just like, mm -hmm. um, which is, again, it's fine. Most people could probably get away with that once a week doing that. But when you're mm -hmm. so depleted going into that day and your stomach's so empty already, it's like, you know, it's definitely. A, it's rough. Yeah. Good times. Good times. Well, no, this is uh, hopefully the, for the viewers out there too, they can appreciate the simplicity of this. Template. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll say, you know, probably for my first main meal, I'll split my vitamins and stuff up twice a day. So with my, my breakfast, my first meal, I'll do, um, I'll do my multivitamin. I'll do my probiotic prebiotic blend uh, with my antioxidants. I will do my fish oil. I'll do, um, my go pill. 
Um, so I'm running Go Pills. So it's like our fat burner. I run that. I think I'm doing it twice a day. Um, so I'll take one in the morning and one in the afternoon. Um, that seems to be working fine. Or I'll just do like on a day I'm working out, I'll do two in the morning and then I'll do uh, the WTFR pre-workout before I go train. Cause that, I mean, I'm at the point now where I'm not trying to push caffeine a ton, but I'm taking a full scoop of WTF, which some people are stim junkies. I'm not like I'm the complete right. opposite. So I'm taking a full scoop of WTF in the afternoon and that seems to be keeping me normal. So I do the go pills in the morning, WTF in the afternoon, um, the go pills with your bean and things like that. So got it. Good stuff. All right. Training wise. Mm -hmm. So we got uh still, is the cardio still the same? Oh, I cut it out of that image. Is the cardio still the same here for you this week? Yeah. And the cardio still the same. Um, well, that's from, from hack spots this week. So we felt yeah. pretty strong. We actually put the band, I was training with Salvi, uh, Slang. We were putting the band towards the bottom. Yeah, you can um, see them right here. Get yeah. Ready. A lot of to get your butt up. <laughs> a lot of people put it at the top. Okay. Right? So to, to actually help you, um, as you go deeper in the lift and you're getting more of that, you know, knee flexion, that quadricep lengthening, they, the band helps you out. I don't agree with that because you know and, and people may say i'm wrong or whatever i mean look results matter right so most when we used to do that in powerlifting the reason you did that was for overload work aka in the hardest part of the movement when your legs are the most activated you're taking more of the load off of your body right um, right. off your spine, wherever it is, right? So you're sort of easing up with your central nervous system toward the bottom, exploding up, and the, the higher you go up, right? So the easier it is as you come up in leverage, the more weight it is, right? So that was more right. of an overload technique to get our central nervous system used to squatting heavier weight or benching heavier weight, whatever it is, harder towards lockout, et cetera. And what people did was they took that social media – they took that, made it, hey, if I put this band on, I can do five, six, seven, eight plates more than I can without it. So people come up with these ideas to, you know, add a foam roller or do this. And I'm doing this because my knees hurt or things like that. Well, let's maybe you should stop adding weight, figure out why your knee is hurting, right? Whether your quads are tight or a certain um insertion point is it's super tight and pulling on something and it's uneven um and then figure it out maybe work on your mobility and then go back to the to the exercise um so i don't necessarily agree with people every time i see it online i just sort of shake my head there's no point to that right the point for the hack squat is to work the quadricep muscle mainly and when it give us that really deep lengthened position of the quadricep knee over toe when we're in the hole without having to worry about a squat bar on our back. Right. right. So it's sort of controlled, allows us to push a little more. So when people are adding that band, you're just taking away the purpose of the hack squat. You know, it's, it, it would be, you'll never see people do it on squats because they know people would call them out and say, Hey, just use less weight and, and focus on your technique, use less weight, drop the ego. But because it's on the hack squat, it's socially accepted in social media, but I'm calling you all out. Stop <laughs> putting the band at the top. If you want to use a band, put it on the bottom and you'll learn real fast that you might not be as strong as you think you are. Cause I'll tell you what, when we did that this week, um, I think I worked up to like six plates plus the band from the bottom. That thing was heavy. And I'll be honest, yeah. like it was heavy, but we were still able to control, get the, get the 10 reps or so um, and go from there. So yeah, definitely. If you have an issue with a machine like a hack squat or something like that, instead of trying to add band-aids to fix whatever issue you're feeling, actually figure out the real issue and then go back to the movement. Got it. Yeah. And uh, looking at the split, same split as the week before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Got it. Good deal. No, no major changes on the horizon for that. No, Sunday is rest day, um, yeah. which I'm resting right now, but it gets to the point that you start seeing the results. And you're like, oh, I want to go train. Yeah. I, I just watched like an hour of the before the Olympias from the 90s. Like, I want to go train. <laughs> cool. Good stuff. 
All right. Well, I think that pretty much does it for our eight week check-in. So, um, yeah, next week we'll, you know, we'll see how Justin's feeling. If he can come on and do a live one, if not, we'll still have the same content that we'll pump out there and mm -hmm. reminder for everybody to like subscribe, turn on notifications again. Cause as we post these, you, you know, that way you can kind of uh, follow along, you know, get a couple weeks behind and we'll lead all the way up to the show and then we'll, uh, we'll kind of reconvene and, if the viewership's liking it, maybe we'll do a, a rebound phase as well after and just kind of monitor, you know, just kind of show what it's yeah. like to be at the level that John's at. So, well, it'll be cool. It'll be cool to, to have people, uh, you know, when we're all at the, the show and, you know, we'll be able to show like the week of, you know, cooking food and, and adjustments and how we're going to make them on the fly and stuff like that. So, that'll be pretty cool. Yeah. Good that. deal. Well, thanks guys for tuning in. We'll see you.